is not new. Uh, it's been covered a ton on YouTube, on Reddit. I mean, it's everywhere. But the reason it's so popular, uh, or I should say it's, it's drawing so much interest, is because there's this fascinating video that goes with the case. Um, basically, Lars, who disappears, we see his final moments on a closed circuit TV camera at an airport. And there's multiple camera angles. It's right in front of you. There, it's, it's not hard to see what he's doing. There's multiple witnesses. There's so much information around kind of what led up to this um, from doctors, from, you know, his friends. And then there's this video Like there's just so much information and no one knows what happened or where he is. So let's dive in. On June 30th, 2014, Lars Matank and four of his friends, these guys are all in their 20s. Uh, they left northern Germany where they were all from. They lived, they worked there and made their way to Bulgaria. Uh, they were staying at a very popular seaside resort called the Golden Sands, and they were just going to have a nice vacation, a nice week-long vacation. They hmm. get there, they check into their hotel, and promptly begin to relax. And everything is going great. They're, you know, going to the clubs, they're going to the beach, they're eating good food. I mean, it's, it's going the way they had hoped it would go until the end of the trip. So on one of the last days of their trip, July 6th, Lars is at a local bar and they're watching a soccer game and something happens where Lars basically voices his interest in one team and the locals that were in the bar, they were supporting the other team. So sure. he's ah. you know, arguing, but it escalates really quickly. It turned into a full blown thing. His friends come in, they pull him out. Uh, there was no physical violence in the bar. Uh, it was just a, an altercation that could have gone to blows, but it didn't. Later that night, Lars and his friends, they're, they're getting ready to shut it down for the night and they go to a McDonald's. And so Lars doesn't want to go in, so he stays outside and his four friends go in to get some food. When they come out, Lars is gone. And so they're sitting around waiting for him and he's nowhere to be found. Hmm. And they say, okay, well maybe, you know, he went back to the hotel. Perhaps he just wanted to crash early. Or so they go back uh, to the hotel and he's not there. And so they kind of are, are facing the hell? this decision of like, well, what do we do? And they're like, well, you know, he's an adult. I'm sure he's fine. And I, I bet he'll turn up soon. So they ultimately, they just kind of write it off and say, Lars will come back. And so they go to bed. When they get up, uh, Lars had returned. And he had this kind of bizarre story about why he was missing. He said that this group of men who he thought were either Russian or locals. So I told you. Had attacked him. And he was convinced that they had been sent after him by the people he had been fighting with in the bar over that What the fuck? Day. Over they sports. Kind of, you know, ordered a hit on Lars. And that was his whole story. And so, I mean, his friends are looking at him and they're like, why did you leave? I mean, if you had been fighting with them, wouldn't it have occurred like right outside the McDonald's and we would have come out and found you? Like you had to have gone somewhere for this to happen or they had to like entice you to go somewhere to leave the McDonald's. Yeah. And then like, how long did this attack take? Because this is like, you know, midnight, let's say, they're at McDonald's and you're not back at the hotel for, you know, four, five, six hours. Like, the time didn't make any sense. Right. But ultimately, they kind of decided that, you know what, Lars just had a weird night. He's back now. He is safe. Uh, so let's just write it off. He was attacked, but we're leaving here today anyway. Yeah. Lars said that he got hit in the ear during the scuffle with these four assailants. And so, just to be safe, they said, Lars, you should go to the doctor. You should just Get it looked at before we, we fly home. So Lars goes to a doctor who examines him and he looks in his ear and it turns out Lars has a perforated eardrum. And you know, at first the doctor actually suggested surgery, which Lars refused. He didn't want to do surgery in Bulgaria. Um, if he was gonna do surgery, he would have done it back home in Germany. And he instead goes for the antibiotic that this doctor prescribes him, which is called uh, Cephiroxime. Cephiroxime. So here's here's an image of it. You can see it for yourself. So he, he gets this antibiotic, and the doctor tells him that you know, flying because he was scheduled to fly home oh, with his friends ear. back in Germany that night. Flying could be problematic for someone with a perforated eardrum because the change in air pressure as you're as you're flying could potentially make the damage to your ear worse. And so the doctor suggested that you don't fly home with your friends tonight. Instead, yeah. you delay your trip home a couple of days and you just kind of let your ear, I guess, recover a little bit before you fly home. So Lars goes back and he, he tells his friends what's going on with his ear. 
uh, and what the doctor said. And their first thought is, well, we'll stay with you. We'll yeah. stay here with you. We'll all delay <laughs> our not? flights. And we'll fly home together. At least somebody. Yeah. But Lars was adamant. Maybe he was just trying to be a good friend and not make them worry. He just said, look, I'm going to be totally fine. You guys take your scheduled flight tonight. Go home. Um, I'm fine. I'll get a, a, a cheap hotel. I'll stay here for a couple of days and then I'll, I'll make my way home. It's not hmm. a big deal. No, so Lars and his four friends no. take mm -hmm. off for the airport. His friends go into the airport and fly home to Germany. And Lars goes to look for a hotel near the airport because he's only going to be delaying his trip a couple of days uh, and he'd rather just be close to the airport. So he finds this cheap hotel called the Hotel Color. And so this is really where Lars's behavior starts becoming totally bizarre. So around midnight, Lars calls his mother and he tells her that she needs to turn off all of his bank cards, like shut off my credit card, shut off my debit card, turn them all off. And she's confused. Right? Like she's trying to make sense of what he's saying, but there wasn't really a good reason for why he was saying this. And then he hangs up. And so she's kind of left with what's going on. Um, then at 3 a.m., so a few hours later, he calls her back and now he's whispering and he's clearly terrified. In fact, Sandra Matank, his mother, would later in an interview after this whole case really blew up, uh, would say to a German TV station that through the phone, she could tell that her son was terrified. Uh, this was not an act. This was like, he is terrified. He's, he's fearing for What the life. fuck? But he calls her at three and he's like, there is a group of men trying to attack me. They're going to they're gonna kill me. And he was 100% convinced of it. She, Sandra, would later say that she wished, she wished that she had asked more questions of her son. But yeah. this behavior was so <clears throat> uncharacteristic of him that I think his mother just kind of was like, okay, we're, we're going to get through the night. I'll talk to my son tomorrow. He's, he's coming home tomorrow anyways. But that didn't happen. So finally, after that, that phone call at three, he texts his mother a little bit after that, asking her about the antibiotic he's been prescribed. Um, and he's asking her I what it is. He's listing the name, something. which again is Cefuroxime. I've never heard of that one. Cefuroxime 500. And he's asking her about it like he has no idea what it is. And she's like, that's a very commonly prescribed antibiotic that lots of people prescribe. They gave it to you. Investigators would later speak to staff at the hotel and they would review the uh, the hotel's footage, uh, their close, their CCTV footage. And between the first phone call to his mother at midnight and the phone call at 3 a.m., Lars had actually been pacing the halls at around 1 a.m. He'd been pacing up and down the halls and he was ducking into an elevator and hiding. And then at some point he had left for about an hour and then came back and no one knows where he went. At 6 a.m., Lars was dropped off at the airport uh, via a taxi and investigators would speak to the person who rode that taxi with Lars uh, and they would say that he seemed a bit off. They said that his, his pupils were very dilated. He gets to the airport and he texts his mother uh, that he's arrived at the terminal. At this point, his mother uh, confirmed that his flight had been booked and she suggested to him that he should go talk to the airport doctor and just get his ear looked at one more time before he flies home. And I think on some level, she just wanted a health professional to see her son. Just yeah. yeah. The behavior he had shown over the past you know, 12 hours was just totally out of character. The CCTV cameras capture Lars walking into the airport, seeing this doctor, and then I'll get into what actually happens. So on camera, and you're gonna see it in a minute, Lars goes into the airport, so his mother's told him that he needs to go see a doctor, and he does that. He, he walks over to where the, uh, the doctor is, and uh, he goes inside. Everything seems totally normal. That doctor would say that you know he was pleasant, um, but as he was being examined, the doctor looked in his ear and said, yep, everything looks okay, you can fly home. But the doctor would say that it was clear that Lars See, he was paranoid about something. The doctor mm -hmm. didn't know what it was. That he has no context. But he could tell that something was going on. He was fidgety. He was a little bit nervous. And then when a construction worker came into the, uh, to the doctor's office, he had on a construction, you know, bright, you know, reflective vest. They were doing some renovations inside of the, the airport. So this is fairly normal. And apparently this guy, this construction worker, was actually working on the doctor's office. And he mm. stepped in to maybe ask a quick question. Um, Lars sees this construction worker, uh, and this is actually, I think this is off camera. You see that he's in the office, but you don't see this interaction. And something happens where 
you know, this guy triggers a full-fledged uh, flight response where uh, Lars drops everything he has, leaves his luggage, and starts yelling, I don't want to die, I don't want to die, and sprints out of the airport. This is all on camera, you're gonna see it in a second. And he uh, leaves the airport, he's, he's just kind of looking around, he doesn't really know what he's doing, and he kind of like jogs his way across the parking lot, and he gets to a big barbed wire fence, instantly scales it, the barbed wires don't seem to affect him, and he disappears into the woods, never to be seen again. So since his disappearance, uh, there's only been, you know, one unvalidated sighting of him. It was a year later by a trucker who really didn't have much information about him. He just said that he picked up a guy that was like barefoot walking on the road, who later on this truck driver would, would look at the news or something and would say, oh, that looks like Lars Matank. Um, but that's unconfirmed. Other than that, we have no idea what happened to him. A couple theories about what might have happened. The first one is that perhaps there was a side effect of this antibiotic yeah. that he was given or by something. his doctor in Bulgaria. But there's a couple huge issues with this. Uh, the first one being uh, Lars never filled his prescription. The doctor, when he went to the airport, was able to see his records and he had not filled it. So he didn't have the, the antibiotic. But even if he had, this is one of the most commonly prescribed uh, antibiotics that you know, the percentage of people that have any sort of side effect is abs it's like less than 1%. So it's possible, but he never filled a prescription. So that, that seems like that's kind of out the window. The other is, especially if you look at the mitriasis that he was experiencing in the taxi cab with the, the highly dilated pupils, you know, the hit to the head, you know, he's yeah. the eardrum, that perhaps he suffered with a traumatic brain injury, uh, a concussion mm. uh, that, that was leading to somewhat erratic behavior. And that's, I'm by no means claim to be a medical professional. Uh, but typically if you see uh, side effects of a head injury, it doesn't present itself immediately mm. and like super aggressively. It's usually over the course of time, your behavior changes, or at least a couple days later they, they present. It's very rare that you would be struck on the head and be a totally different person, but it is possible. Another theory is that even though Lars did not have a history of mental health issues uh, and neither did anybody else in his family, um, that the, you know, the fight he got into where he was attacked could have triggered some sort of psychotic break that was yeah. so stressful that he lost his mind. Um, that is certainly possible too. So weeks turned into months, turned into years, and you know, despite the unvalidated sighting, I mean, no one has no one has any idea where Lars is. Damn. Um, you know, he was an outdoor enthusiast. He was definitely competent in the outdoors, not like a survivalist or something, but he definitely was not you know out of his element out in the wilderness. Um, and so some thought perhaps he just wanted to start a new life, and he he ran off into the woods and you know is living it out out there, but. They, the, the family, the Matank family, they hired a private investigator. I mean, they pulled out all the stops to scour the area and look for him, but there's no signs that anybody is like living in the immediate proximity to the airport in the wilderness there, and there's no body, there's, there's no anything. He's just gone. I hope one day they're able to, to find uh, Lars, uh, for better or worse, just closure for his family. So 